sure that we'll touch a lot more on diet and, and many of you will have questions to ask Katrina as we delve a little bit more into diet. But obviously the microbiome touches all areas of us, not just what goes on on our inside. So I'd like to introduce to our third speaker, who really in some ways doesn't need an introduction because I'm sure you already know all about Professor Ian Fraser. <laughs> of course, in 2006, he was Australian of the Year. He is also the founding uh, Chief Executive Officer of the building in which we stand uh, as the Director of, the research, uh, of Research for the Translational Research Institute. It was really his vision to see this world-leading biomedical research facility to focus on translating scientific knowledge into practical benefits for the community. And of course, we've had great success with that and the Gardasil vaccine. But tonight, he's going to talk to us about something a little bit different. Please make Professor Fraser welcome. Well, first of all, thank you all for coming along to listen. Uh, you've had your canopies outside, you've had your meat and potatoes uh, from Mark, and your vegetables from Katrina. I think you should see me as the froth on the top of the coffee that you had afterwards. And in the interest of time, I'm not even going to use my slide, I'm just going to talk. Now, I'm a latecomer to this field of what the microbiome has to offer in terms of disease, and I've spent quite a little bit of time recently being interested in skin cancer. Now, we have heard that the skin is populated extensively with bacteria, and they were given a number per square centimetre. Uh, you'd like to think that when you've washed your skin, you've got rid of those bugs. Why do we wash our skin if we're not getting rid of the bugs? Uh, well, the reality, of course, is that washing them does not get rid of the bugs. My uh, former microbiology teacher, when I was a medical student, pointed out to me that the only way that you could sterilize your skin in Edinburgh was Warriston Crematorium. Uh, and I think we have to accept that the bugs that are on our skin are there. But don't just think about them as bugs, because we also have yeasts there. They're a bit more complicated as organisms than bugs but they, they can cause disease, but they also populate our normal healthy skin. And we also, of course, have viruses there. And you might think that you don't have any viruses on your skin at the moment, or maybe some of you have got some warts, and you recognize that warts are caused by a virus now. But if I were to go around this room and pluck out your eyebrow hairs one by one, and I promise you that I'm not actually do that, because others have done it. There's a very nice published study, in fact, three published studies, for each eyebrow here that I pluck out from you, I would find on average five different papillomaviruses in that eyebrow here, and that's in a healthy population. Now, we carry viruses in our skin like we carry bugs in our skin. And when I started looking at skin cancer, I was interested in testing the idea that the, vi the viruses that we carry in our skin might contribute to our risk of getting at one particular sort of skin cancer. And that is the, the common squamous skin cancer that we all know is largely initiated by overmuch exposure to sunlight, particularly if you come from my part of the world where your skin is fair and your hair is sort of orangey colored. Well, it's yeah. gray now, but never mind. <laughs> and, and that increases your risk of getting sun damaged skin. So we went and looked for viruses in the skin, and others have published that they were there. And we agree with them that they're there, but they don't seem to be doing anything there. And the idea that they were there but not doing anything was a bit strange, but nevertheless the data now are very convincing that there are these papillomaviruses in your skin, in your eyebrow hairs, but also in your normal skin. The genetic information is there, but it's not being used. So that gave us a little bit of thought as to whether that was actually relevant to skin cancer. And for the moment, I'm going to shelve that idea and tell you something else that we've observed. Uh, a, a colleague of mine, Joachim Dillner, who actually worked on papillomaviruses at the same time as I was working on them, made a very interesting observation with his students about six years ago, that if you look at the skin cancer precursor lesions, the, what you would call sunspots on your skin, that these were populated by bacteria, and not just by the sort of bacteria that are present on normal skin, but rather on the bacteria that we would normally associate with disease in the skin, uh, staphylococci and streptococci, that are basically, they cause boils and things like that. And he, ne he never followed up on that, and I hadn't even realized that he had done that, but we went and did the same study and got the same answer. 
and sound that there were that these lesions in your skin, the precancer lesions, are populated by bugs. Now, if you think about that, that's perhaps not surprising. The skin is, if you like, the soil, and the bugs are what's growing in it. And the soil for these precancer lesions is clearly not the same as the normal skin. You can see that with your eyes. It doesn't look the same. And so it might just be that we've got a different soil there, and therefore a different set of bugs choose to grow there. But then, if you then start to put the knowledge that we have together about what the bugs do in the skin with the knowledge about how skin cancer arises, you can come to some interesting hypotheses. And I'm basically just going to tell you today a hypothesis, an idea, a guess, if you like. We know that the, there is a lot of interaction between the bugs in our skin and the skin itself. These interactions are critically important for keeping our skin healthy. The normal bugs on the surface of our skin tell the skin cells to make things which make it easy for these bugs that grow there to stay there. These are proteins called defensins. And these defensins basically fight off bad bugs and allow the good ones to grow. Furthermore, the bugs talk to each other. And the bugs on our skin that normally live there tell, if you like, each other that they're there, they, they make these things called quorum sensing molecules, which is a big word, but it basically means something that one bug secretes to talk to the bugs next door, because they're all individuals, like you're all individuals, and you can talk to each other, but only by using words. You don't know what your neighbor's thinking until he's told you. The bugs don't know what's going on next to them until the bug there tells them. So these quorum sensing molecules are there to help make sure that the right bugs stay on your skin and the wrong ones are not. So if the wrong ones get there, then all of the normal defenses go away. Your skin then recognizes that the wrong bugs are there, just as they would if you had a boil. Now, your immune system is there to defend you against infections. And the very most important part of your immune system is the barrier function that your skin provides. But if that fails, other things have to happen. And what happens that you recognize as inflammation? You see redness and you feel pain. That's what a boil is. It's sore and red and hot, and that's inflammation. But what the immunologist sees, and what the immunologist looks at, is what's actually going on. And what's actually going on in there, and what we've shown from some of our studies, is that a whole range of signaling molecules are produced in the skin to start defending against this invader that's coming in, these bugs that shouldn't be there. That's fine. That's what they're meant to do. But they're there also to basically ensure that the skin repairs itself. Okay? After all, once you've got damage, you want the damage to be healed up. You've got the boil, you want to get rid of it. And so they stimulate growth factors and things, interleukins. We'll not talk about the names, but the point is, think about growth factors. Think about skin. Think about skin cancer. What is a skin cancer? Too much growth in your skin. These growth factors are there in the skin as a result of the wrong bugs being on the surface, and that's equally true if it's a precancer lesion or if it's a boil. And so we recognize now that these factors are there. The hypothesis is that they are driving the progression of that skin precancer lesion towards cancer. They're driving more cells to divide in your skin, more repair to go on. But these cells are now abnormal cells, and they're being pushed in the wrong direction. So it's not an easy hypothesis to test, but that's basically where our work is taking us. So we started looking for a virus that might be causing the problem, and now we're testing the idea that the bugs that grow on our skin, if they're the wrong bugs in the wrong place, are helping to drive our precancer lesions towards cancer. Now that sounds totally crazy, but think about this. If my immune system isn't working right, if I've been given drugs to damp down my immune system, as a kidney transplant patient or a heart transplant patient gets, I'm a hundred times more likely to see the progression of that precancer lesion to a cancer lesion. And we know that when these drugs are given, what they do is they take away one component of the immune system, actually the most important part for getting rid of viruses as it happens, but it also is the regulatory component of the immune system. And it pushes the immune system towards making a new sort of immune response, the sort that happens when you have to repair your skin. 
So you take away all the you take away the controls on the immune system with these drugs, and suddenly you're 100 times more likely to get skin cancer. So we've got some indirect evidence that the hypothesis that we're testing at the moment might actually be right. And so this is possible because of the technologies that Mark referred to earlier, this business of being able to look at what's growing, not what's growing in your skin so much as what's there on your skin, which wasn't possible when I was a medical student. We could only grow things. Now we can actually find out what's there. And what we're finding out is something that we simply haven't expected. That the population of bugs that grow in your precancer lesions on your skin is not what we would have expected normally. It's driving an inflammatory response locally. And the really interesting thing is that this is all re history repeating itself because this has already been done in the gut. And we already know that in the gut this is true to some extent as well. So what we're finding that what's true in the gut, which dr helps drive precancer lesions in the gut towards cancer, turns out equally to be true on your skin. And that's the story I'd like to tell you. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>